Hey everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we are going to take some really interesting questions on AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And before I show you the very first question for today, I want to tell you that we have loads of exam Q&A series on Microsoft exams as well. So here you can see that we have series on AZ900, DP900, AI900. So all the fundamental exams are covered. Then we have associate exam series as well. For example, DP203 and very popular AZ104. So in case you or your friend or your colleagues are also preparing for these kind of exam series, then please spread these videos to them. Okay, so coming back to this video, in today's video, as always, besides the questions and the answers, I will also share some AWS official documentation for your self-study and question validation. So let's straight away dive into the very first question for today. Here it comes. So let's begin the part 30 with question number 226. Now before I read this question my friends, please make sure that you have watched all the previous episodes so that you are covering the entire syllabus for the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam and also focus on last few episodes because from the last few episodes, we really focus on the questions on the same pattern that appears in the real exam and also I've been talking and telling you how to pick the important keywords or the key sections in the questions and this approach will really help you to identify the right answer for any question. So please watch all the previous episodes. For now, let's read this question here that says that which AWS service provides central identity and access management for the AWS resources and your options are option A, Amazon S3, option B, AWS Lambda, option C, Amazon CloudFront, and lastly, option D, AWS Identity and Access Management, better known as IAM. And the correct answer for this question is option D, AWS Identity and Access Management, which is also very close to the keywords given in the question here as well. And friends, we have taken so many questions on these concepts as well. For example, AWS, Amazon S3, Amazon Lambda and CloudFront. What exactly is AWS Identity and Access Management? Well, to start with, you can read it here that why should you use the IAM? Well, because of the simple reason that AWS IAM, it helps you manage and scale workload and workforce access securely supporting your agility and innovation in AWS. In very simple words, my friends, you have AWS application, you're working on AWS cloud. Now you want to manage the access and the security. So for example, you have loads of users. Imagine that you are a big company and you have a lot of employees working on the AWS cloud. Now you really want to manage the access or the security level. You really want to control the authentication and authorizations of all the employees. In that case, AWS identity Entity and access management is the service to go for. And in the same documentation, you can also understand what are the key benefits of the IAM. You can also understand how exactly IAM works. So all these concepts will really help you boost your understanding around the IAM because this is one pivotal concept in case you are really looking forward to work on AWS cloud and not only AWS cloud my friends IAM or the similar concept also exists in Microsoft Azure, Google GCP or any other cloud provider and here you can see that this is also used by the Dow Jones. So please understand the core concept of AWS IAM and with that let's move on to the next question question number 227 that says which pillar of AWS well architected framework is designed on the idea of frequent, minor and reversible changes and your option are option A reliability, option B operational excellence, option C performance efficiency and lastly option D cost optimization. So please read the question very carefully, pause the video, choose your correct answer, put that correct answer in the comment section but these steps will really give you confidence in the real exam. For now let me reveal the correct answer and that is option B operational excellence. And you can understand all the six pillars of AWS Well Architected Framework in this documentation starting with the operational excellence. So here you can read that the operational excellence pillar includes the ability to support the development and run the workloads effectively, gain insights into their operations and continuously improve the supporting processes and procedures to deliver business value. And not just this concept my friends, you can understand all the other key factors like security, you can also understand the best practices, reliability, so all the design principles, all the principles for the AWS well architected framework, all are documented in this documentation. 
And one thing I can promise you, you will surely get some questions on AWS Well Architected Framework in the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And we have taken so many questions on this concept in the previous episodes. Now let's jump on to the next question, question number 228 that says which security concept refers to the practice of automatically scaling resources based on the security related events and policies. So what are the options given here? Option A is security groups. Option B security token service, which is also known as STS. Option C security information and event management, which is popularly known as SIEM. Then the last option is security automation and orchestration. And the correct answer is option D security automation and orchestration and everything about the security orchestration automation and response, which is also known as SOAR, is given in this documentation. And here you can read using this concept of SOAR, you can build, improve and automate security posture for a highly secure automation environment. And what else is given in this documentation is, of course, you can understand the SOAR concept in much more detail here. And then you can understand what are the partner solution. So all in all, a great concept when you're dealing with the automatic scaling of resources based on the security related events and policies. Moving on with the next question, question number 229 that says that according to the AWS shared responsibility model, once again, we are in the shared responsibility model, very important concept. What responsibility a customer have when using AWS Amazon RDS to host a database? And the options given are option A, manage connections to the database. Option B, install Microsoft SQL Server. Option C, design encrypted at risk strategies. And option D, apply minor database patches. So what is the correct answer? Could you guess it? Well, the correct answer is option A, manage connections to the database. One quick tip I can give you my friends, whenever you have the questions on AWS shared responsibility model, always focus whether the question is asking about the responsibility for the customer or the question is asking about the responsibility that has to be shouldered by AWS Amazon. So as we've discussed in many previous questions, there are set of responsibility that are to be shouldered by the customer. And then on the other hand, there are other set of responsibility that are to be shouldered by the AWS itself. So please read the question very carefully and understand the differences between the both. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 230 that says which AWS service provides a fully managed service for intrusion detection and prevention. So what are the options given here? Option A, Amazon S3. Option B, AWS Lambda. And then option C, AWS CloudFront. And lastly, AWS Shield Advance. Now, I think just by looking at the option, you probably can take a very informed guess here. And that is option D, AWS Shield Advanced. And of course, if you have been following us for all the previous videos, you will know that AWS S3 is a storage option. AWS Lambda is a function or a code. And on the other hand, the AWS CloudFront, this is a content delivery network CDN service that helps you distribute your static and dynamic content quickly and reliability over the internet. And of course, my friends, all the AWS official documentation that I used or referred in this video or in the previous videos and also in the subsequent videos all are available in this documentation given here. And the link for this documentation is shared in the description box. So please go ahead and download this file and you will find all the links to all the AWS documentation that we have covered so far. So each episode is listed. You can click on to any episode and this will take you to the correct documentation. Friends, I really know that you're soaking up in those questions and the answers and the documentation, but I really want to request you here that your likes, comments and shares, they are the actual fuel for this content engine. So you are not just the viewers, you're actually the growth engine for this YouTube channel. So please help us with your likes, your comments and share this video as much as you can. And I promise to you to bring the very best content on Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure and Artificial Intelligence. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.